In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here are two people that a lot of you see running around like crazy in the hallways of this school quite a bit. These are my two kids. Sorry, by the way, the one projector is down, so we only have one screen today. You'll have to crank her next. So here's my two children, Noah and Gwen, and man, do I love them a whole bunch. Here's Noah. Hard for me to believe and say that in 10 days I'll have a teenager. Noah will be 13 years old. And he's he's quite the young man. He's in seventh grade right now and a very smart young man. Uh, School comes kind of easy to him and he works really hard so he never has to have homework and math works well in his mind. But as much as he likes the school thing. He really loves sports. He's a sportsy kind of person, basketball, football, baseball, loves video games, regrettably, still loves Fortnite, uh, loves all kinds of other things. Um, Also, very proud of Noah on how he really just jumps into situations and he kind of is learning to roll with it. So here's a picture of him this summer. Different culture, different place, different island, Antigua, and he just jumps in with with the peers, the the people from the same age group, uh, and he's playing not baseball here, this is cricket. And so he just jumps right in and willing to play, uh, happy with that. Also, kind of a funny person. Clearly, all of you know that that sense of humor and that funniness, that that comes from me and not Mrs. Hebner. I think you all know that very well. Okay, maybe not. Uh, But a very clever young man, a person who all on his own without Googling or anything is sitting next to me in the car and we're just driving and out out of nowhere he says, "Uh, Dad, if Jesus was born of Mary and um, Jesus was the Lamb of God, did that mean Mary had a little lamb? And just sits there with this smile on his face. A very clever kind of person. That's, that's who he is. And here's Gwendolyn, a little firecracker of a cutie. And as a nine-year-old, so proud of her, too, this summer at a vacation Bible school. She worked with the little kids. She had a four-year-old carried around on each hip and was walking around at vacation Bible school, just showing so much love on these kids. Of course, Gwen is our supreme athlete of the family, and by supreme I mean above and beyond. I have to do the proud dad thing and show you just a little clip from one of her recent gymnastics meets. Some of the things that she can do as a nine-year-old, I really don't even understand how a body can do that, but take a look at this tumbling pass coming up. I'm glad she's good because that leotard she's wearing is like $7,000 and has 4,000 sequins on it, so uh, I guess it's worth all the money. Uh, But quite the athlete, more muscles in her stomach than I have in my entire body, which is kind of a, a ridiculous kind of a thing. And always the poser always looking to have a good time and fun. And yet, as, as much as I love my kids and as wonderful as they are and, and as much as I am pleased with who they are growing and becoming um, as people, oh, there are some moments. Like that moment I couldn't find my iPad and then I realized I couldn't find my daughter and as a three-year-old, yep, there she is, uh, on the big girl potty with the iPad out of, out of nowhere. Uh, she's the kind of person who even as a three- or four-year-old I'd say, Gwen, what are you doing in your room? You know, because it's quiet and you can't hear, so you think something's up. Nothing. Gwen, what are you doing in your room? Nothing. Gwendolyn Grace, tell me right now, what are you doing in your room? Don't worry about it. Oh, well, you're going to worry about something, I tell you. Um, Noah, too, he is getting to that point now of being that middle school age boy, which I absolutely cannot stand because it means... He's got a super smart mouth. And so everything has to be a cut on his sister. Everything has to be a comeback to the parents. Everything has to be, I'm like a defense attorney and I always logically know better than parents on why I shouldn't do something. And sometimes, oh, I love these kids, but sometimes I just... Uh, okay, no, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, it crosses your mind sometimes. to just ah. Uh. Do you feel that sometimes at your, at your home? This amazing relationship that God intended to have father and mother loving each other and children that are an extreme blessing, blessings to their parents and parents blessing to their children. And well, I think you all know it doesn't work that way always. Can I share with you just some simple statistics? 5.1% 
So this is roughly 40 to 50 of you here in the student body aren't living with either a mom or a dad, live with a grandparent or a guardian. 11.9% of you, so roughly this is 80 to 90 of you, are living with one parent not in the picture at all. Single parent, the other one's not even around. We have 20%, so now we're in like the 170-ish range of our students who have divorced or separated parents. And of the 63%, roughly, that do have two married parents, you know well and I know from you, that doesn't mean it's going so well at home, does it? Mom and dad aren't necessarily always getting along. Mom and dad aren't always showing the kind of love to you that you would hope for. Maybe mom and dad are on the brink of, of breaking things off. And the very thing that God intended to be blessing, to bring love, mother, father, children, family, sometimes just crumbles apart. And there's nothing but hurt and pain. And it leaves children wondering, how come mom and dad don't love each other anymore? How come mom and dad don't show me the love I'm expecting? Why are my parents so demanding of me all the time? How come my parents just don't get it? Why would they expect so much of me? How can I ever meet those standards? Why don't they just get off of my back? And yet on the flip side, there are plenty of adults in this room and plenty of parents that I talk to who feel the same kind of a way. Why are they always disrespecting me? Why are they always disobeying and in tears, they'll, they'll say to leaders of our school, why would he do such a thing? Why would my daughter make such a choice? Why would they put themselves, that's not the way I raise them. Hurt, pain, sin, fracturing everything. And if that's as much we're, as we're struggling with our family relationships and, and things are strained and problematic, how much more so with our relationship with our Heavenly Father? What do you think it's like for our Heavenly Father to look down and say, that's supposed to be my child? Kind of like I might say to my kid, well, that's not the way a Hebner acts. What would my God say? Christian, you bearing the name of the Christ? I think John the Baptist understood this pretty well. The gospel for this week is from Matthew chapter 3. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Uh, hold on here, Jesus. I'm baptizing people, preaching, repent. The kingdom of God is near. Turn from your sin. Be baptized for forgiveness. You're going to come to me. You don't need this. I need this. John understood what you and I all understand, the hurt, the pain, the, the distance that we have from our Heavenly Father because sin separates us, because sin puts shame on us. I need to baptize you? I don't think so. And this is what makes what Jesus said next so marvelous, so incredible, so mind-blowing, so beautiful. Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Everything that I'm asking you to do, everything that my Heavenly Father wills for you, anything that is right or righteous, whatever it is that you have to do, I'm going to do too. No, I don't need to do this. But I'm going to fulfill every bit of righteousness and do this too. And so John consented in this marvelous moment, this one moment where you have all three persons of the Trinity sensibly present to humans in sight or sound. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him, shining on him. There's the Holy Spirit. And then a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. What a moment. When the Father booms from heaven, this is the one. This is the one that I promised. This is the one that I said to Adam and Eve, the ones that I used to walk with in the garden in the cool of the day because they're my children. I'm creator, they're created. And then they sinned and they hid from me. This is the one that I told them would crush Satan's head. This is the one that I told Moses, that sinner, there's going to be a prophet even better than you. 
This is the one that I told David, that murderer and adulterer, there's going to be a king even greater than you. This is the one that I told my people, my sinful children Israel, someone's going to come to be pierced for all your transgressions. This is the one, and it's my son. And oh, did he have every reason to be pleased. Think about how Jesus grew up as a child. We know that one story, the boy Jesus in the temple, the 12-year-old boy, so perfect, so obedient, so respectful to his parents and to his heavenly father, it, it blew Mary and Joseph's mind. They didn't even get it. What are you doing here in the temple, Jesus? Well, where do you think I'd be? My father's house. A person who grew into a man that was so loving that he would love even the outcast and the downcast and the sinners, even his enemies. A person so obedient and pleasing to his heavenly Father that having this path of suffering before him and the cross, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he pleaded, Father, take this cup from me, but, but not my will. Your will be done. A son who was so willing to please, to obey, to love, that he was even willing to hang from a cross to be abandoned by that heavenly Father. Why? so that you could join him as children of God. So that the Heavenly Father could look from heaven and not see you covered in shame, covered in sin, covered in guilt, but the Heavenly Father could open the heavens and beam down and light on you and say, you, you are my son, you are my daughter, and with you I am so pleased. And we think, how could this be? It's because the Son of God, this perfect substitute, could hang on a cross and all that sin and shame could wash away. It's because we went to the waters of baptism and just as the waters of Jesus' baptism fell off his head, it's like they fell off his head and right onto ours, that he in his baptism sanctified and made special this special thing called baptism so that when I'm baptized, I am clothed and covered in all that righteousness and all that perfection of Christ so that when, when God the Father looks at us, he says, yes, this is my son, this is my daughter, and I am so pleased. What a special thing that is. Do you think about that? That after a long day, when you go home and say, why can't, why can't any teacher just be happy with me for once? And you go home to parents and say, why can't they just like my grade and A minus is okay, I can live with that. I'm trying my best. That what you put, when you put your head on your pillow at night, you can remember I had that sign of the cross on my head and heart and I was baptized with the same water uh, as Jesus. And though my teachers or though my parents may not show that they're always so pleased with me, I have a Heavenly Father who is so pleased. And on those days when you look around and your family feels like it's, it's falling apart and your friendships and relationships aren't going so well, you can remember, I have a brother in Christ because I'm a child of God. And he has loved me to the fullest with his life and his death. And when everything seems in your life like it's just going wrong and going bad and you're doing bad, you look to the heavens as the Father lights on you with his love and you remember, I am his child with whom he is so pleased. My friends in Christ, what a blessing we have in baptism. If you aren't baptized and interested in baptism, please come talk to me or talk to Pastor Dobler or some other teacher here. These are the two weeks where I'll be coming around and talking to some of you students who have indicated that you may be interested in baptism. What a wonderful blessing that God offers to us. And for those of you who have been baptized, every day to wake up and know my sins of yesterday drowned. My sins of today will be drowned. My actions today, so good, so pleasing to the Father. Why? Because this Son, Jesus Christ, pleases the Father, and so I, I too am a child of God. Thanks be to God for his grace and his love and our perfect substitute and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.